Maybe I'll do a video updating and transforming this build if you guys like this video. So it recently came to my attention that this video has over 100,000 likes, which is absolutely crazy. So I think it's safe to say that you guys like the video. Two years ago, I recreated the entire castle shown in Mojang's Medieval Fortress building book, thus building a castle according to Mojang. Now I'm going to be taking that same castle and transforming it. No, I won't be quadrupling it in size and making it unrecognizable from the original. I'll be trying to imagine what it would have looked like had Mojang set out to build the same castle today instead of in 2016. For my guide, I'll still be using the original book somewhat, and also the village, as it's the major in-game structure to receive an update from Mojang themselves. I also won't be fixing what isn't broken. If a build still holds up, I won't mess with it just for the sake of change. Let's get started. Terrain. The original castle was mostly positioned on a flat expanse near some hills. In 2016, we didn't have huge mountains. But now, we have huge mountains, and I intend to take advantage of them. The new castle will be positioned on the slopes of such a mountain in ascending tiers, but not just any mountain. This one is also part of a sheer cliff dropping down to the ocean far below. I've got a castle to pick up and move 10,000 blocks, so I best get busy figuring out how I'm going to do that and where everything is going to go. I wasn't kidding when I meant pick up and move. <laughs> I'm starting by copy pasting all the existing structures to where I want them in the new location. Then I'll begin transforming them and adding a few new things. Oh by the way, this old portcullis still works so that's nice. Oh and yeah, I've got world edit which makes everything much easier. Nice, so everything's here and it's pretty much a castle now. Thanks for watching. Nope. No, 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 no. That's just step one. This castle includes two types of walls not seen in the original one, namely a curved wall and a sloped wall. Luckily, not all in one. I'm also going to need to figure out something to do with this tower since it's a little bit short at the moment. Consider this a first draft. I've built it essentially the same way that the original parts of the wall were built, so it isn't transformed yet. Same with this tower. I kind of just gave it a base that I'm not super happy with yet either. My point is I just need to get some form of the wall done before I can begin thinking about decorating and updating it. I'm also going to need to work out how this upper wall interacts with this big pile of snow. The last preliminary step I want to take is the construction of a large stone outcropping off in the ocean here. I'm sure it won't be important later or anything. Surprise, surprise, this is also a first draft, uh, especially the thingy sitting on top of the pillar. But don't worry about that too much now, since I'm ready to move on and begin transforming and building anew.
So I've constructed quite the imposing structure here just for the path to ascend from the gatehouse to the keep, and I'm quite happy with how it leaves space for multiple levels and pathways leading off it. In terms of new blocks being added to the palette, smooth stone and various forms of andesite are the most significant. The original castle could only use smooth stone slabs, and for some reason barely touched andesite at all. I think I've found a happy medium with my usage of both materials. I was slightly concerned about going overboard with smooth stone everywhere, but I'm happy with it as a trim. Now I'll be moving on to build paths and structures clutching the edge of this cliff. Bonfire Tower is the first major addition entirely of my own design. I, do, I don't really count the paths. I recently watched the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings movies for the first time, so I won't pretend that there aren't things in this build inspired by the great fortresses of Middle-earth. Anyways, I feel that I managed to keep the spirit of the original castle intact in my new tower. The one major difference is that it is transformed <laughs> from the original old castle. The other walls and towers will eventually come to look similar to it in time. Now I'm going to begin transforming the existing houses scattered around here. I'll probably just stick campfires on the chimneys and call it a day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This video has way too many opportunities for jokes like that. Over on the left side of the castle, I'll be making an actual town with buildings flush against each other akin to some of the images featured in the book. An actual medieval town with narrow winding streets seemed like a natural evolution of what we got in the original castle design. There were some hints of something similar, like a few independent builds that looked like part of a town, but nothing on this scale. There's still some parts of the new castle with grassy areas and crops, but now we've also got this. There's still work to be done though, but it's definitely going in the right direction. I've expanded this large multi-story building and integrated it with the second tier of pathways. I made the second floor lobby thing as well that leads directly into the boarding areas, bypassing the tavern below, which has also been expanded to include a private dining room for rent. I look forward to future villagers creating many a dastardly scheme here, what? Onto the walls and keep!
So I've scaled up the keep in all dimensions because I always thought the original version was a little small. It was very cramped on the inside as well. At the same time, I also updated the outer walls and towers. I didn't make them bigger, but I did beef up their foundations a little bit. Parts of the old castle seemed a, a little weak, I suppose. It also didn't help that the old castle had several large gaps in its walls. Not that mine doesn't, but it has fewer of them. Also, one of the walls got hit by an avalanche and it is now covered in snow. I fixed the interior of the keep and updated parts of it as necessary, primarily the throne room. By the way, one of the new additions that I didn't mention before is the stable next to the gatehouse. The book mentions stables, but the old castle design didn't feature any for some reason. Oh yeah, I also added interiors to all of the buildings in my medieval town. There's lots of different types of shops and houses, including a butcher, baker, blacksmith, library, and several taverns and boarding houses. And that's all of the original castle updated and transformed anew, not to mention an entirely new town. But there's one last thing. You probably haven't, and I certainly haven't forgotten that one little spot on a pillar out in the ocean. I told you guys I just watched The Lord of the Rings like two weeks ago. <laughs> I wasn't gonna let the opportunity pass to make some sort of gigantic tower. This one is loosely based off Orthanc Tower and the White Tower of Ecthelion, while still using mostly the same block palette as the rest of the castle. The one major new block I used was Netherbrick for the top of the dome. I always thought Netherbrick was a good block for castles, since even before the original book was made, and I had to resist using it more in this build. Deep Slate tiles ended up just seeming more suitable for most cases, except uh, with this mildly magical tower. By the way, I made an interior for the tower. It includes an ascending order, a storage room, servants quarters, a library, dining room and kitchen, bedrooms, lounge, or sitting room, master bedroom, and then the top of the tower. And so I'd call this build complete. Almost all of the old castle received some degree of upgrade except for one building. I didn't touch the exterior of the cathedral since I think it was already really well constructed. I did add a much needed interior though. Honestly a lot of the upgrading was just adding things like trim and window shutters to the houses and switching out a few blocks like diorite for calcite. The largest single transformation was the layout of the castle in that it went from this to this. But there's still one thing missing. That's right, villagers. Given all the job sites everywhere, some of you might have guessed this, especially since no villagers were present in the original castle. These guys have lots of houses to live in and places to work and food to eat, as long as their pathfinding can keep up. Carpets next doors seem to present quite the challenge for them. Anyways, you'll have to let me know in the comments what you think of this transformation. Did I do a good job? And maybe, if you guys like this video, I'll expand upon this build further as I'm by no means out of ideas related to castles. Although any continuations would probably have to be according to Speeve or uh, me at not Mojang. I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did, be sure to subscribe down below and hit that like button. But that's all for today. Until next time, take care everyone, see ya.